is nutritional assessment in a patient with cirrhosis. So before coming to the assessment of nutrition in a patient with cirrhosis, I would like to explain a few definitions which we will be using subsequently. So first is the definition of malnutrition. So we know that malnutrition is a clinical syndrome that results from either deficiency or excess of nutrients that causes measurable adverse effects on tissue, body, or composition and results in poor clinical outcomes in patients. And it represents a spectrum of nutritional disorder across the body mass. It could be obesity, it could be sarcopenia, it could be frailty, which in turn have an adverse effect on the clinical profile of the patient. So let's now try to understand what is the definition of sarcopenia. So in uh, common terms, sarco means muscle and penia means loss of muscle. So simply as the picture also shows that loss of muscle mass will be sarcopenia. However, the criteria to define sarcopenia would be presence of low muscle mass as well as either of the presence of low muscle strength or low muscle performance. So muscle strength can be assessed by a variety of tests which I will be subsequently dealing and so is the case with low physical performance which can be assessed with simple bedside tests. So then comes the concept of frailty in liver disease. So frailty and sarcopenia have many things in common. In fact, sarcopenia is one of the component of frailty in which the physical component of the frailty includes sarcopenia and malnutrition. Whereas the other components of frailty include functional decline, physical deconditioning, impairment of cognitive function, as well as decrease in the overall functionality of the patient. So after understanding the basic concept of malnutrition, frailty and sarcopenia, so now let us gaze into the magnitude of malnutrition in cirrhosis. So according to various studies, the global prevalence of malnutrition is 24, ranges from 24 to 82% in patients with cirrhosis, depending on whether the patient is decompensated cirrhotic or compensated cirrhotic. And in India, this proportion is higher. It is around 47 to 84%. The reason being that the uh, nutritional intake is poor in Indian population and the low muscle mass seen in Indian population also contributes to this. Men have a more prevalence as compared to women when it comes to malnutrition and alcohol related liver disease patients have a higher incidence of malnutrition as compared to other etiology of liver cirrhosis. So now what is the clinical significance of malnutrition? How does it impact outcome of a patient? So a patient if has malnutrition, it could be because of variety of causes like decreased intake in physical inactivity, or other issues like social lack of social support or other issues, then it manifests either as frailty or sarcopenia, which I have explained in previous slides. So what it does is the patient who become frail and sarcopenic, they will have a poor prognosis, either in the form of increased risk of decompensation of cirrhosis, increased healthcare utilization, increased uh, rate of hospitalization, mortality as well as poor health related quality of life. Hence, it becomes important that we identify these frailty and sarcopenia in patients with cirrhosis and we intervene early so that we can halt the progression of sarcopenia and frailty so that patient outcomes becomes better. So now coming to the main part of my talk, which is the nutritional assessment. So we will be dealing with the nutritional assessment in following order. First, I will be talking about the anthropometry which are simple tests which can be done. Then I will be talking about nutritional screening tests, then serum indices. Then I will be dealing with simple bedside tests which can help in assessment of malnutrition as well as sarcopenia and frailty. Then I will be talking briefly about some uh, advanced investigation like uh, bioimpedance analysis, DEXA scan, CT and MRI, which can help us to assess the muscle mass. So first and foremost is the anthropometry. So all of us know that anthropometry requires the measurement of different body parts. So first and foremost is the BMI. All of us are uh, well versed with BMI, which is calculated by dividing the body weight of the patient with height in meter square. But here comes the important point. In patient with cirrhosis, we do not simply calculate by the 
total body weight of the patient, we have to correct the body weight of the patient in accordance with the presence of ascites. Because we know the patient has ascites, he will be accumulating fluid, which will give a higher body weight of the patient. So depending on the grade of ascites, we have to subtract the amount of uh, body weight with this total body weight so that we can use that corrected body weight to calculate the PMI. So if the patient has mild ascites, we subtract either 2 kg or 5% of body weight. For moderate, we subtract 6 kg or 10% of the total body weight. And for gross or severe ascites, we have to subtract 14 kg or 15% of the total body weight. Then we will get the corrected body weight, which we have to calculate, which we have to use to calculate the BMI in such patients. So as it was explained by the previous speaker that the WHO cutoff is different and for Asian population, the cutoffs for normal BMI as well as obesity, pre-obese and obesity is different. So for Asian people, the normal range is 18.5 to 22.9 kg per meter square. And any patient who has a BMI less than 18.5 should undergo a thorough nutritional assessment because he is at a high risk of malnutrition. So then comes the tricep skin fold thickness. So first and foremost, we require a caliper, which uh, the most commonly uses is Harpenden caliper, which is shown in the figure also. So this one is the Harpenden caliper, which is the most widely used. So how we can use it? We can use it at two sides. One is the triceps and another one is the subscapular region. So here we can apply this caliper and we can measure the triceps skin fold thickness, which gives a good indicator of percentage of body weight. So the advantage of triceps skin fold thickness measurement is that it is cheap, fast and portable. However, it has its own disadvantages like it is a poor predictor of visceral fat. And in a patient who have ascites or gross edema, it may give a false report. But however, for screening purpose, it is a good test. And depending on the cutoff which are available for age and sex of the patient, we can assess whether the patient has malnutrition or is adequately nourished. So then comes mid-arm muscle circumference. So it is calculated. First of all, we have to calculate the mid-arm circumference. And from mid-arm circumference, we have to subtract the 3.14 times the tricep skin fold thickness, which gives us the mid-arm muscle circumference. And mid-arm circumference is calculated from the midpoint of acromion process of scapula and the olecranon, which gives us the mid-arm circumference. And after we subtract 3.14 times of TSF, it gives us the mid-arm muscle circumference. And it also has age and sex defined cutoffs. So if it is less than those uh, percentiles, then we can ass assess whether the patient is adequately mal uh, uh, nourished or is malnourished. So after anthropometry, we have various screening tools for nutritional assessment, which includes subjective global assessment, malnutrition universal screening tool, nutritional risk screening, However, I will be talking in detail about the subjective global assessment, which is one of the oldest and widely used. And the second is the Royal Free Hospital Nutrition Prioritizing Tool, which is recommended by the European Association for Study of Liver, as well as the Indian National Association for Study of Liver. So subjective global assessment score has various components. It takes into account the nutrient intake, weight, symptoms, which may lead to decreased food intake, functional capacity of the patient, and metabolic requirements and then looks at the physical examination of the patient whether looks it looks at the patient is emaciated and has loss of body weight so based on these assessment the patient is graded as sga a b or c so sga class a means that patient is adequately nourished and b doesn't have any malnutrition sga b means that patient has moderate amount of malnutrition and those who are severely malnourished means they will go into the c category so this SGA was modified by RFS, that is Royal Free Hospital. So in this, what they did, what they first calculated the BMI of the patient. So if the BMI of the patient is more than 20, then we calculate the mid-arm muscle circumference, which I explained in previous slide. So if mid-arm muscle circumference is more than fifth percentile and the dietary intake of the patient is adequate, that means the patient is adequately nourished. However, if the mid-arm muscle circumference is less than 5% percentile for the age and sex of the patient and dietary intake is also poor, That I, then either the patient is moderately malnourished or severely malnourished. 
Whereas if the BMI is less than 20 and mid arm muscle circumference is also less than fifth percentile, then the patient directly goes into the severe malnourished groups and requires particular care so that his nutritional uh, status improves. Then second important score is the Royal Free Hospital Nutritional Prioritizing Tool. So it has different steps and it gives different scores. So in the end, the total score is calculated and based on that score, we get to know whether the patient has low risk of malnutrition, moderate risk or high risk. So I will not go into the details of the steps. So then comes the various serum indices which can give us an uh, idea whether the patient is adequately malnourished or not, although they are not perfect. For example, serum albumin. If serum albumin of the patient is low, that it, it gives an indicator that patient is not adequately nourished and requires nutritional supplementation as well as other physical activity intervention. Similarly, amino acid branch, we all know that branch chain amino acids are required for muscle synthesis. So if the patient is lacking branch chain amino acids, then it may also means that the nutritional uh, assessment is poor of that patient. So now I will be talking about the simple bedside test, which can be done for the assessment of muscle strength so that we can, uh, we can assess whether the patient has sarcopenia or not. So the first and foremost is the hand grip strength. So hand grip strength is assessed using this instrument. This is the this is known as dynamometer and it is the handheld dynamometer. So what, what we do is we ask the patient to sit in a chair and place his arm as it is shown in the picture. And then we ask the patient to press this dynamometer as hard as possible. And we take three readings from the dominant hand of the patient. And the highest value of the amongst the three can be taken up as the value of the hand grip strength for the patient, which is usually explained in kg. So it is a simple and easy predictor that whether patient's muscle strength is adequate and whether he is sarcopenic or not. So the cutoff for grip strength less than 27 kg for males and 20, 16 kg of males signifies that patient muscle strength is poor and he has sarcopenia. Second simple test is gait speed. This is also a very simple cheap test, no extra equipment is required in which we ask the patient to walk for four meters and calculate his or her gait speed. So if the gait speed comes out to be less than 0 0.8 meter per second, then it indicates the patient is sarcopenic or frail. This is also a very good, cheap and easy to do test which can be done in our day to day practice. Third important test is six minute walk test. In this test, what we do is we ask the patient to walk continuously for six minutes on a plane level ground without any obstacles. And then we calculate the distance which he walked in six minutes. If it is less than 400, that means that patient performance of muscle is poor and he requires further assessment as well as intervention to improve his muscle status. And a study has shown that those who have six minute walk distance of less than 250 meter, their Mortality as well as morbidity is more as compared to those who walk more than 250 meters in six minute walk test. So these three tests are very important and very cheap. They don't require any extra equipment. So these can be practiced by each one of us. And when we uh, give nutrition or diet chart to such patient and exercise chart also, then we can see after three months whether we had improvement in these parameters or not. So these also give us a dynamic view of these parameters, whether the patient is showing any improvement or not. So then comes some advanced tests which can help us to identify whether the muscle mass of the patient is deficient or not. First is the skeletal muscle index, which is based on the CT scan. Here, what we do is we take a CT scan of the patient and the third lumbar vertebra level, we calculate the cross-sectional area of various muscles, which are the psoas muscle, paraspinal and abdominal muscle, which is shown in the red in this picture. The cross-sectional area of these muscles is calculated and then it is divided by the height of the patient in meter square and it gives a skeletal muscle index. So based on the skeletal muscle index, we can see whether the patient is sarcopenic or not. So the cutoff for uh, SMI for males is 42 in Indian population and 38 in females. So if it is less than that, that means the patient is sarcopenic. So to explain further, these are the two diagrams. On the right, 
right hand side you can see that the muscle mass in the red is comparatively higher as compared to in the left hand side and the skeletal muscle index is 70 on the right hand side and 49 on the left hand side so clearly the muscle mass is better in right hand side and the prognosis of this patient will be better as compared to the left hand side patient so as i explained that the cutoff recommended by the indian national association for study of liver is 42 skeletal muscle index for male for diagnosis of sarcopenia and 38 in females then comes the bia or the bio impedance analysis so this is also a method of looking at the fat free muscle mass of the patient so here sensors are applied to the skin and the electrical flow is run through the body and depending on the composition of the patient and the flow of the current throughout the body we can assess the total fat free muscle mass of that patient so the leaner the patient the easier the conduction and there are various equations using those we can calculate the muscle mass so for cutoff of muscle mass for bia is for men it is 7 and for women it is 5.7 as per the indian national association for study of liver cutoffs then comes the dexa which stands for dual x ray absorptiometry and uh, here what we do is we expose the patient to x rays from different angles and we calculate the total muscle mass lean body mass as well as we can calculate the bone mineral density also which can help us to assess whether the patient has osteopenia or osteoporosis in addition to the diagnosis of sarcopenia and muscle mass this is also a very good diagnostic uh, modality if it is available we can utilize it and the cutoff of muscle mass based on dex size 7 and 5.4 as per the indian cutoffs so in the end i would like to summarize by saying that we can follow a simple flow chart which has been given by the european association for study of liver that how to go about in assessing the nutritional status of a patient with cirrhosis so first of all we have to see whether the patient has cirrhosis or not if he has cirrhosis then we have to calculate the child child pew score which you must be knowing that it is based on the five criteria and it has three grade class A, B and C. So CTP A means that patient is compensated cirrhotic. He or she doesn't have any ascites, any bleeding from the upper GI tract and he hasn't developed any altered sensorium or hepatic encephalopathy. So if the patient is child C, means that the patient is end stage liver disease, then the patient directly goes into the high risk group and we have to assess for sarcopenia either by using CT scan, which I explain later, or DEXA or bioimpedance analysis. And if the patient has sarcopenia, then accordingly we have to plan for his diet as well as activity. However, if the patient has child A or B status, then we need to calculate the BMI. And mind you, you have to calculate the corrected BMI as it was told that we have to subtract the uh, kgs of depending on the grade of ascites. So if the BMI is less than 18.5, then the patient also goes into the high risk and he has to be assessed in detail using either subjective global assessment or any score which is followed in your institute. And depending on that, he will be either classified as a patient of sarcopenia, frailty and malnutrition and then he has to be managed accordingly. And if the patient is obese as well as sarcopenic, then it is a different entity which is known as sarcopenic obesity, which is also a very poor prognostic marker in patient with cirrhosis but i will be speaking skipping that part so basically what i have explained is that depending on the ctp and the bmi only we can assess whether the patient has high risk of malnutrition or not and we can easily do bmi gait speed hand grip strength in our day to day opd also and get to know whether the patient is sarcopenic and take further steps to progress to halt the progress of sarcopenia and improve their prognosis so I would like to conclude in the end that nutritional assessment is important in patient with cirrhosis. Initial screening by anthropometry and screening tests are available and you can choose any test which suits your <coughs> hospital settings. Simple bedside tests like hand grip strength, gait speed and six minute walk tests are good enough for sarcopenia assessment. And those centers which do not have CT or MRI, they can also do these tests. Although CT skeletal, CT-based skeletal muscle index is the gold standard for diagnosis of sarcopenia. So, 
I would like to conclude by saying this, that as per your hospital setting, choose the best test that is available. And those patients who have sarcopenia, they should be given priority in uh, giving a structured dietary as well as exercise program so that their functional status as well as their muscle mass improves. Thank you.